Hello, you wonderful people. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use server actions in Next.js to submit forms. And more importantly, we're going to learn about SAT validation server side when submitting on forms. I'm going to teach everything in the context of this application that I'm building, which is a basic grocery store. You're able to add some items to cart. Let's get a bunch of ice cream add to cart and more importantly you're able to click the start checkout button that brings you to the form and this is what we're going to focus on today if someone tries to submit the form without entering any valid information it's going to complain with these red labels saying please provide the appropriate information that is necessary so in this video we're going to take a look how i accomplish this we're going to take a look at the code and see all the examples and if you have questions you could always ask them in the comments and if you're wondering what am i building this amazing application well i did mention it is using next.js 15 which is amazing and it is powered by shetcn tailwind components and more importantly i'm using strapi a headless cms that allows you to set up your api in minutes which allows you to have this amazing admin panel to manage your content so if we take a look at my application and you see that i have all my front end page items here where am i storing that data i'm storing it inside my headless cms i have my home page which is responsible for all that home page data for instance you see our slider our categories grid with our categories and features and you could see the list of all the products. And more importantly, when I submit an order, it should show up here. And I say should because it should. I think I fixed it. But in today's video, let's jump in and take a look how we could submit form with server actions with server-side SAD validation. Let's start by looking at simple example before we take a look at my example in my application. Here we have a basic form. In Next.js, action will be triggered whenever you hit a button with a type submit so whenever we hit the type submit we will trigger our action in next.js case this is going to be our server action and the way we're able to pass our data is using form data and the way we're able to get access to the value let's say uh, first name or last name is using this name attribute as we continue on in our next.js we also will define our action which runs server side as mentioned before we get our data from form data and we're able to access it via the name attribute that we defined in our form so using the first name we're able to get our first name data from the form data so here we're saying form data that get passing the named attribute first name, and that's gonna give us our value for our form. Once we have our data from our form, we're able to do whatever you like, and this will happen on the server. You could make a call to a database and add that data, or you could even make a call to another endpoint, which is something I'm doing in my application. And then you're able to return some sort of response from your server action. By doing this, it will not return this response in a client side component. If for instance, you wanna do something with the response, maybe show a pop-up that the order was submitted, something that I'm doing in my case, you do need to take an additional step. This is where use form state comes in from React DOM. You are able to use this hook and into it, you pass your initial state and we also pass our action and use form state will return form state that we are able to access our data from the server now and this form action that we will now replace our action with a form action from use form state. So now when we fire our form, it will trigger our action and whatever the response is, we'll be able to get access to it via the form state attribute. And in order to do that, we need to update our action to add the previous state argument. So now we're able to keep everything the same. The only difference is after we do something, we're able to return previous state in our response that we will have access because we use the use form state. This allows us to take our form state from the action and either return it as value. And I'll show you the use case of that in my form. For instance, if the form is partially submitted, and after validation, not all the fields are provided, you don't want it to reset the state. So this is one way that we're able to keep the items that the user added, even though they did not complete the form. And we'll take a look more in detail in the code example that I have for you. 
the most important step is whenever you're learning something new is don't forget about the documentation and next year yes, they are they do a great job with their docs so if you take a look at server actions and mutations read through this this covers all the items um, that i've used in my application for instance here they show you how to define your server action and then if we scroll down you're going to see an example for use form state and they're doing the same thing that i'm doing in my application where they're passing their action their initial state for the form and then from that you get your state that's returned from your action and now in your form instead of using your create user action you're going to use the form action from use form state to submit your form but everything else is the same so now that we have the basics let's jump into my code and see how i did it i am here in my order routes this is where my page lives so if we take a look at my next.js application and inside the app folder you could see i have a route called order with the page.tsx this is where my order form lives and my cart items what's awesome with next.js because we're able to use server components and server actions my cart items are responsible for their own data which is kind of cool and the order form all it has to worry about is thinking about how to submit the form so let's take a look inside the order form going through the code we have our typical imports for all of our front end components but what i want to show you here is that i am using use form state and now you have some context why it's because i want to be able to get the response from my server action back into my client side component and you and you could tell that this is client side because i'm using use client and this is because when the form submits i want to fire a user toast saying hey you submitted the form as we mentioned before you need to set initial state and my initial state i do have some errors that i'm returning that we're going to talk about in just a minute i have my strappy errors if something happens from strappy side of things i'm returning that and then i have my form data which in this case is first name last name street address state zip and phone so if you take a look here here's my form data first name last name street address state zip and phone as we scroll down we know that in order to get the data from our server action we want to use this use form state so i'm passing my create order action that we're going to take a look at just a minute i'm passing the initial state that i specified here above and then we have access to our form state and our form action here i am destructuring the form state to get my first name last name street address state zip phone and i'll show you why i'm doing that in just a moment and then we also have our form action that we pass as action into our form action so why am i doing this well before we could answer that let's take a look at our form action so whenever the form is submitted we are going to trigger this form action and if we take a look inside the form action i'm going to scroll up a little bit if we take a look inside our server action you could see that we're using that pattern that we mentioned we're passing our previous state and we also have access to our form data in my project i am checking if we have the token and is it the actual user that's authorized with that token and if none of those exist for now we're returning null but i should probably do some sort of error and here i'm um, getting the value from my form from the form data via the get method and like we mentioned before this first name last name street address it correlates with our forms name attribute so we have name first name name last name name street address and this is how we're able to get our data from our form submission using server actions then here you're probably wondering where's the schema order so in my application here i'm using this library zod that allows us to do validation so here i define a schema order and here i'm doing basic validation using zod methods and i'm doing very simple ones but if you could look at the zip code you could write very complex validation and this is not that complex but it just gives you a taste to see that you could do regex or you have other ways to check your data to make sure it's correct before you pass it to your endpoint and because i have this schema 
I'm able to use the safe parse method, pass my form data, notice how this is already typed and I'm able to validate these fields because Zad allows you to have this on success, which basically if everything is uh, successful, don't worry about it, keep going. But because I'm saying, hey, if this is not successful, please return the errors. And what will it will do, it will, it will check what fields you have. And if any fields are missing, it will return validation error. And let's take a look quickly in action. For instance, if I just say Paul Bratz and click submit, the validation will fail because granted I provided Paul Bratz, I did not provide the rest of the items. And this is going to return previous state, which will include Paul Bratz, but it will also return all the validation errors that I'm using in my form to show these messages that I define inside the Zod schema here on top. So notice all these messages, that's what's coming as a response. And the reason why using form state is important is if I didn't have access to the previous state, if we take a look, if I didn't have access to this form state and able to return my first name and last name fields that I previously entered, I wouldn't be able to reflect that in my form. For instance, if I remove this from now, let's say I'll just remove the default value for both of these fields. And when I try to submit the form, I will enter the value, click submit, notice that they disappear. They were passed to the server, but I didn't pass them back via form state to the front end. So let me bring this back to its original code. And this is what I meant when I said by using set form state, you're able to get your previous data that you passed to the form that you could then use inside your application. For instance, I'm just structuring all those items from form state. And when the form gets partially submitted, it doesn't lose that previous value that I had before. And I'm also able to get the ZOD errors from my server action and display it on screen. And to finish this video, let's submit this form and cover the last bits of code. So I'm going to say John Doe somewhere USA state. I'm in Texas 78641. And then phone number, obviously it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and click submit. So notice it submitted my form and redirected here. I have order submitted, um, little pop-up that happened and notice that my card is cleared, which is awesome. And then if I go back to my backend application in Strapi and refresh today, Saturday, and here, this is the order that I just submitted, John Doe, blah, 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 blah. And he ordered some ice cream. And so you could see that the changes in the form submission reflects in our application. And you could see that I tied it to the user that's logged in. I also added additional field. For instance, I added the date received and the order status. And I just noticed I should probably fix this and not display it as a number and display it as a string. And finally, back in our action. So we know how we get our data from our form via form data. We know how to get it based on the name attribute. Then we use Zod to define a schema that we have here above that we're able to use to validate all of our form data. And if everything is valid, we continue. And here I am doing a couple of things. I'm getting a user's cart and I'm getting all the cart items. Once I get all the cart items, I check, is the cart empty? If it's empty, I'm saying, hey, there's nothing in your cart. We can't submit this. And then we continue. And then I have the items and I want to just get the IDs. I want to get items that I want to add to order, which have IDs that are product IDs. And then I also have cart IDs, which what I want to do is after I submit my data. So here I am submitting this data to Strapi and I'm adding some of these additional fields, which is the date, the order status. And in Strapi we have this flag called connect that allows you to pass all the items to the order and it will add them to the order in the database. Once this is complete and there was no issues, I'm doing one more final call where I am 
calling a clear, clear user's cart service that I created, which basically takes all the items that were previously in the cart and it will remove them from your cart. And finally, we return a message called order submitted. And this is what triggers my pop-up. And this is why using use form state is important because now in my order form cart, if I scroll back to the top, I have this use effect. And if the response that we get from form state from our server action says order submitted, I fire this toast that appears that we saw earlier to say, hey, your order has been submitted. So that's it for this video. I'm going to continue doing these type of videos where I talk about things that I'm building, things that I'm learning. And I think this is a good way for me to continue to improve as a developer because I find that it's different from building a thing and then just being kind of stuck in your own like space where you're just like looking at the documentation, you're coding, you're doing the thing, but you're not explaining things back to folks. It's kind of awesome because like it's, it's like, yeah, you get a lot of stuff done, but I find when I talk about stuff, I realize that, hey, maybe I didn't understand this part as much as I thought I did. Maybe this is some, something I should revisit. So I really find that through teaching, I'm able to reinforce the knowledge that I'm constantly looking at and re relearning. So if I were to give you a tip, you don't have to start a YouTube channel. There's no point, like I had this YouTube, it's not making any money, it's just costing me time. Honestly, the only reason I do this YouTube channel is because I have you guys and girls that love to watch some of the stuff I do. So I thank you so much for that. But also it actually led me to a lot of opportunities, but even past those opportunities, it allowed me to continue practicing talking about the code that I write. And I think one of the secrets that I found in terms of learning quicker, at least it takes a long time to learn, but to speed up the process is if you practice teaching it to somebody else. You could do it in a YouTube, you could do it on a blog, or you could do it in front of the mirror, or you could do it to your cats. And what I found out, it's a really good way to find the things that you might not know as well and find your gaps of knowledge and try to hopefully fill those up. And I like to do this publicly, even though a lot of people call me out and say, I don't know anything, that's perfectly fine, and I don't care, is because this is what's been helping me to get better, not only talking about my code, presenting the things that I do on camera, which a lot of people be like, oh, you just want to be a YouTuber. And the farthest of the truth, I don't make any money from my YouTube channel. I literally want to make money from a SaaS product or from my job. And this is why one of my favorite YouTubers is WebDev Cody. And I just realized I literally like copying him right now with my face and the way I was doing my recording video uh, with uh, the screen. And I think I'm trying to be a uh, web dev Cody uh, double ganger. But the reason why I love his channel, it's because he's a developer first and the way he's focusing and getting stuff done is he has his job and then he's also making SaaS products. And yeah, part of his YouTube channel is getting so big, he's also getting other opportunities. But I love the fact that his selling point is, I'm a developer and I just build cool shit. And that's my goal. I don't want to be an influencer. I just want to continue to learn and improve my skill as a developer and build cool shit. And if you haven't checked out or you just don't know who WebDev Cody is, what the heck are you doing? Go and check out his channel because the dude is amazing. Uh, I'm just going to... Uh, show him here quickly. So before we go, yeah, so uh, right here, WebDev Cody, go check out his channel. I mean, everybody, dude, see like when he shaves, I grew this mustache just so like, I think I'm like slowly trying to turn into WebDev Cody. And to be honest, I used to have a beard, by the way. I think I shaved it and I, Jesus Christ, my hair. Look at this. Look at this. Look, 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 look. I just got to bring my facial hair back. Dude, I'm I'm coming for you, WebDev Cody. You, you, that's it. I, I actually told him publicly that he's uh, one of my motivations for continuing this channel and doing the things. And this is why I'm changing the style of my videos because I think what he's doing is very admirable. And I think, you know, in art, there's inspiration. And I think in great content and people that do the things that you want to do, there's a lot of inspiration. So I just realized I'm literally copying WebDev Cody. I think I told him I'm basically following in his uh, footsteps. So I think this is a good sign. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about that for no reason. But thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.